Tuesday, July 5th, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at whether the UK can go bankrupt. We're also going to look at uh, Brexit. I hear a lot of people talking about the cost of living crisis in this country and blaming Brexit for that. And, and I want to touch upon that. Before I start, though, I'd like to say, yes, I had a nice couple of days away playing golf with my friends, but it's nice to be back home with Billy and the family. Uh, yeah, and, and I want to go over a little bit of uh, what's going on in terms of the uh, fuel prices in the UK. We've had some protests, I think yesterday, all over the country drivers driving very slowly on the motorway or highway as Americans would call it and causing disruption. Uh, on the way to where I went, uh, I went on Sunday, it took me just under an hour uh, to get there. Uh, yesterday it took me uh, an hour and 40 minutes so there was disruption and people are fed up with the price, uh, price of fuel. Uh, they blaming um, the war, they're blaming Brexit. But I think people are starting to wake up, as you can see here. People are waking up to the fact that the government is also to blame. All the government spending, government spending more than 50% of GDP, government is taxing us uh, to death. Like <laughs> the uh, FT had a story yesterday and they had some photos of the protest yesterday. And this guy is holding this sign here saying, the government are taxing us into poverty. Yet everything you buy here in the UK, uh, with a few exceptions, you're paying 20% VAT. Uh, for fuel, uh, it looks like the government takes almost a pound in taxes. So yes, uh, the other day before I left, I filled the tank up of my car, I put the diesel, the, the the most expensive diesel, because I like to keep, uh, you know, put a good fuel into the car. And it cost me two pounds 15. A few weeks ago, it was under under two pounds. So even though the price of uh, oil has come down quite a bit, uh, diesel prices are going up. And government, yes, 80 to 90 pence of that is government. So the protesters want the government to cut this fuel tax. And on top of that, I think uh, in that 80 to 90 pence, they include VAT as well. So it was interesting to see a photo, I think it was on Twitter, of a petrol station in Gibraltar. Gibraltar is still a colony of the UK and they use the British pound. It's called the uh, Gibraltar pound, but it's one to one. And over there, it's still one pound 20 for diesel. And why is that? Well, because it's a tax free place. It's an offshore tax haven. So we would pay be paying a lot less. And, and it's not just fuel, it's everything else that we consume. There's VAT, anything you buy, there's VAT, maybe except for food, of course. But uh, that's the problem. And uh, with that, we'll segue into whether the UK can go bankrupt or uh, default. And one of the reasons I'm speaking about this is because I've noticed, uh, not just here in the UK, but also in the US, the current account deficits, the trade deficits are going really into overdrive. And, and I think that's more of a symptom that monetary policy is still very loose and fiscal policy are still very loose in this country and in the US and we're still consuming more than we produce. That's simply what it is. There's this article though that came out July 2nd in the Telegraph by uh, their economics writer called Jeremy Warner. And he talks about this. He says, we are on track for a currency crisis and bankruptcy. Our leaders fail to grasp 
that taking back control also means taking back responsibility. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole article. I've read it. I'm going to put a link for you in the description under archive.ph so you can read it for free. Uh, he's just basically saying that um, our uh, current account deficit almost rose to 10% of GDP, which is huge. It came out at 8.3% for the first quarter. And uh, yes, as I said, all that means is that they've destroyed the private sector. They crowded out uh, entrepreneurship, uh, business, and they've made the government bigger than the private sector. And that, that never works. And they've kept the fiscal spending, the deficit spending, government deficit spending. And the Bank of England, I'm sorry to say, uh, Mr. Bailey, your interest rate at one and a quarter percent is still very accommodative, seeing that we have uh, prices rising probably at 12, 15 percent. So you're way behind the curve until we go to 20 percent interest rate. This is never going to stop. And I'm afraid that there could be a point where uh, the British pound. Uh, yeah, there's a currency crisis like he talks about. We're already down 10 percent this year versus the dollar. At the moment, things like interest rates, like the gilt yields are still under control. But if there's a full blown currency crisis in the UK, you're going to see uh, foreign investors dumping gilts. You're going to see yields going through the roof. It could be like Greece in 2011, 2012. So now I want to talk a little bit about whether the UK can default or go bankrupt because Mr. Warner erroneously says that the UK has never defaulted. It's the only country to never default. Well, I've got news for Mr. Warner. Uh, you just have to go back to September 19th, 1931. So uh, that's the day the Bank of England or the UK defaulted. And you might not know about that and say, what are you talking about? Well, that's when we stop paying people in gold. So countries like uh, in Europe, uh, I, and I've heard about this, that had loads of sterling deposits with the Bank of England, uh, they got shortchanged. <laughs> the Bank of England and the government defaulted. They stopped paying in gold. They, they paid in more and more promises to pay. So that was a default. And ever since then, we've been defaulting. And how does that work? Well, countries... If they can keep going, printing the money uh, and foreigners accept it. Yeah, technically they're not defaulting, but the purchasing power of that currency going down, that's a default. I would say we've defaulted already this year by 10% because foreign investors are getting 10% less for their money if they think in dollars. So yes, we can default. We can also go bankrupt, I would say, if foreigners completely lose complete confidence in the currency of this country, then yes, the government will collapse. It's going to be like the Soviet Union when it collapsed. And uh, how is a country reorganized? How does it go through bankruptcy? Well, it's a messy process. It's a basically an economic collapse like the Soviet Union had in Russia. You've got oligarchs coming out uh, and governments trying to sell assets and uh, there will be a lot of vultures out there. And, and that's what happens. And I think that's very possible. So yeah, um, the feeling I get as well, because uh, I was away Sunday and yesterday, and I, I overheard a few of the guys that were playing, talking about all the prices going up and Brexit. They always bring up Brexit. But I can tell you, I was covering the Brexit situation in 2016. And I said, don't let them fool you into thinking uh, that Brexit is going to be the cause of inflation, the cause of the currency collapse. I, I was saying that already back in 2016. And lo and behold, 
the Brexit card has been used. What I would say, <laughs> did uh, the countries in the EU, did the US, did Canada, did they have a Brexit? <laughs> because they're having high inflation as well. They're having a cost of living crisis. So yes, maybe Brexit is affected a tiny bit, but the underlying cause of the current economic malaise in this country and everywhere around the world is inflation. And by inflation, I don't mean the rising prices uh, that we're having right now. By inflation, I mean all the creation of currency and credit out of thin air to bail out the banks in 08 and even before that and the continuation of that, especially after March 2020. This is what is going on. It's payback time. What did these people think that they can borrow and borrow to their heart's desire and never have to pay it back? That's what's happening now. We're paying back. And that's how countries pay back with a cheaper currency. That's how they default. But it, it could get to the point where we get to like Greece uh, or other countries that actually go bankrupt. Greece, of course, had to be bailed out, but I don't think anyone's going to bail out this country. So, yeah, that's how I see it. Um, I had a nice time, though. It doesn't mean to say that when these things are happening, that that the country is not running, but things are disrupted. Um, they're talking now about train driver strikes. Uh, which would be the first time in 25 years. You've got the fuel protests, uh, the uh, airport and airport situation, not just here, so it's not just Brexit in Europe as well. In the US, flights are being canceling. So life is being disrupted for the general public. Of course, for the one percenters, they have their private jets, they're okay. But uh, I have a feeling it might not be okay for everyone very soon and um, I've got someone coming on later on uh, today I'm gonna interview uh, Rafi Farber and we're gonna cover a very interesting subject he covered the other day on his channel I'll probably publish uh, the video tomorrow though wait for that uh, I think it's a very interesting topic something he's found um, that's happening right now so with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. Yesterday, of course, was the 4th of July. So the markets were probably very quiet. I didn't really look at the markets yesterday. I was playing uh, golf. Uh, I think I teed off around 1030. And uh, so I didn't really, and then I had to drive back home. So it's 820 AM London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 1807. It's down about a dollar. Uh, high has been 1812.50, low 1806.30. Silver is trading right around $20, $20. It's up three cents. High has been 2022, low has been 1991. Uh, the Dow future here is uh, up half a percent at 31,140. The NASDAQ 100 future is up 100 points, just under 1%. At three thousand, uh, sorry, eleven thousand six two nine, and the S and P is up twenty four points, thirty eight thirty five. FTSE one hundred index is down seven points at seventy two thirty three, and the Euro stocks fifty is up fifteen points at thirty four sixty eight. To the currencies, sterling uh, down point two of a percent, one twenty eighty six. Uh, the euro is also down about a quarter, 103.98. Uh, the dollar is up half a percent versus the yen, 136.22. So the yen is in the same boat <laughs> uh, as the British pound. It's quickly losing value. Uh, the dollar is up slightly versus the Swiss franc, 96.20. And the dollar is up uh, slightly as well versus the U1 at 669.80. Let's check the uh, Russian ruble. Uh, well, dollar's at 55, so it's ticked up a little bit, the dollar, here in the last few days, ever 
ever since I made my last video, I think we're around 53. Um, back to the other currencies here now, the uh, Aussie dollar, uh, that's down half a percent, 68.33. Uh, the dollar is unchanged versus the Canadian dollar, 128.60. And the Kiwi dollar, uh, that's down a third at 61.88. To the general commodities, WTI crude is down three quarters of a percent at 108. Brent crude is down two thirds of a percent, 112.25. High grade copper down 1.3% at 353. And US NAT gas is down two and a half percent at 571. Uh, to finish off, just have a quick look at the 10-year yield, U.S. Treasury 10-year yield, and the bond market. Well, the 10-year yield is up uh, four basis points at 2.94%. So there you go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. And think about subscribing to my channel as well. So with that, I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.